Kellogg's launched a new cereal shaped like donut holes with a bold claim, more glaze than donuts. But is it real math? Let's break it down. A donut hole is just a sphere with a radius and a donut, that's a torus, a small circle spinning around a bigger one. Now to compare glaze fairly, both shapes must have the same volume of dough. The one with more surface area will have more glaze. With a fixed volume, say one cubic unit, we get a unique sphere of volume 4 thirds pi r cubed. If we solve for r and then the surface area, it comes out to be about 4.83. But with a torus, we have options. Make the ring bigger, shrink the thickness and the volume stays the same. But surface area, that changes. Turns out smaller r, less area and bigger r, more area. Let's look at the exact map. Here are the formulas for the volume and surface area of the torus. Swap r with 4r and to keep the volume the same, we must adjust a to a by 2. What happens to the surface area? That doubles. On the other hand, if we shrink r to r by 9 and bump a to 3a, volume still stays the same, but the surface area drops to one third. So the smaller the radius, the less the surface area. Until r equals a, go any smaller and you no longer have a torus, just a weird math block. With r equal to a and the same volume, one cubic unit, the torus has a surface area of about 5.41. That is still 12% more than the sphere. So even the torus of the smallest surface area has more glaze than the sphere. So the torus always wins. For Kellogg's actual serial volume of 1.68 cubic centimeter, the sphere gets 6.83 centimeter square of glaze. The torus at least 7.65. The world is full of clever marketing. Being math fit means not falling for the sweet talk and making everyday decisions logically.